Hello. Good morning. Uh, I have a great pleasure of just giving you a, a minute or less on Lisa Hall, who's going to be our next speaker. Uh, Lisa and I kind of go pretty far way back. Um, we spent a few lovely years at Calvert Foundation helping to build it. First she was the CIO and then became the CEO. Uh, but she's since moved on to an amazing new gig in Europe uh, with the Brinkenmeyer family. And uh, she's running the Anthos uh, Capital uh, Unit and also the Scopos Impact Fund. Uh, the Brinkenmeyer family is a, it's actually an impact investment arm of the family office that does uh, um, the CNA retail chain is the privately held um, organization that the, the family works with. And she has, um, she's really been digging in deep with Wharton recently, and I'm, I know she's going to share some of, uh, some of the findings there on some research around impact measurement, which is super critical for the field. Uh, but mostly, I just want you to join me in welcoming Lisa. Uh, she's a woman of great integrity and long commitment to the field and, uh, and just a, a wonderful organizational builder. Lisa. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, thank you Tim, for those incredibly kind words. When Tim, and, Tim first conceived of SOCAT back in 2007, I could not have imagined more than 2,500 social investors and social entrepreneurs under one tent in, it, it, from all over the globe. It's, it's really incredible. And when Tim and I, back in 2007, were much younger, not nearly so wise, and if I recall correctly, my hair was a little bit shorter, and Tim's was not nearly as, or was more full than it is now. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thank you, Rosalie, Penelope, and all the other principals for Mission Hub. You all deserve our gratitude and one more round of applause, I think. <laughs> Look at this amazing crowd. I, I'm truly humbled to be here today. And as Tim mentioned, for the past two years, I've been living and working abroad. And it is so good to be home. And while it's always great to be back visiting in the United States, it's not exactly what I mean when I say it feels good to be home. Some call it their North Star. Others, their true North. For me, being here at this extraordinary conference, in this community of like-minded souls, of fellow travelers on the social capital journey, it feels like home. So I want to ask you all a question while I'm here, back home. What and who are you waiting for? What is your true north? Five years ago, I stood in the Cal Theater when SOCAP was a much, much smaller crowd. And I stood before the crowd and said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. And most of you know that's not an original line. It's inspired by Barack Obama, who himself was inspired by Poem for South African Women by June Jordan. Five years ago, impact investing was also in its infancy, and there was not clarity about what to call it. There were lots of terms for it. And frankly, I don't care what we call it. What I care about is what we do as individuals, as organizations, as institutions. If five years ago there was a lack of clarity, which there was, <laughs> about what we call what we do, then today there's even greater lack of consensus about how do we define it. 
But let's not be distracted by these conversations of what to call it and how to define it. Let's focus as a community on the doing, on the impact investing. Most of us started with the idea of a big tent. And I've always been an advocate of a big tent. Lots of market participants welcome at the table of impact investing. But I had no idea how big the tent would get. And it keeps getting even bigger. A big tent can be a great thing. More people and more organizations under the tent brings increased sophistication and structuring as we begin to collaborate in areas like impact measurement and research. In the 2015 Jin J.P. Morgan study, led by Yasmin Saltik, nine out of 10 investors said co-investors were key to their decision making. I urge us all to collaborate as much as possible. Part of demonstrating proof of concept for us as a sector in our ability to collaborate is evidenced by investment platforms like Tonic, led by Stephanie Cohn Rupp. More people and more organizations under the tent also brings with it more complexity, more scrutiny, including more regulation. So let's be careful as an impact investing community not to overstructure, not to overengineer. Let's not complicate it if it's not necessary. And let's be sure to match appropriate capital with the actual financing needs of the people that we're trying to serve. No matter where you sit in the tent, I still ask you, who are you waiting for? If it was true five years ago, it is even more true today, in 2015. We, all of us, are the ones that we've been waiting for. And I love this picture of leaders from the field because it reflects the diversity of our sector. In this picture, there are people of different races, there are people of different religions. There are people of different countries of origin. And I think my favorite thing about this picture is that there are men and there are women. And we as a community are not serving the traditional power base. The people that we are trying to give access to capital don't look like the traditional power base, and we shouldn't either. We have to include everyone under the tent, people and professions that are different from ourselves. We must do better, we must be better than the traditional power base about inclusion if we want to serve those without access. Impact investing is on the path to mainstream. Even the Pope is talking about it, as we just heard. And it's because of that diversity, not in spite of it, that we're on the path to mainstream. The evidence includes the engagement of family offices like Anthos, where I am blessed to lead the Impact Investing Initiative for one of the largest family offices in the world. And if that isn't mainstream, I don't know what is. Last year, at Anthos, we launched the Scopos Impact Fund. In the past two years, we have made capital commitments to six fund managers and one direct investment in a portfolio company. These funds span the range of asset classes. Some are originating debt, some private equity, and some are doing both. And we are not alone in our view that there's a spectrum of impact investing. A spectrum that has been long heralded by investors like FB Heron Foundation, led by Clara Miller. 
At Anthos, we have an incredible team. And we are not just making investments. We also want to help the field of impact investing to scale by sponsoring research and by doing field building work. We started off by sponsoring work on liquidity and exits. And we're thrilled today, we're so excited, to be able to announce the release of a new paper entitled, Great Expectations, published by the Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania. I think a lot of people are actually going to talk about this study, and it already has received coverage in the Wall Street Journal, which you can find on today's online edition. The study says that in a certain segment of impact investing, market rate returns can be achieved. We started off simply wanting to know, can you get exits at impact investing? And when you exit, is mission preserved over time? And the answer turns out to be an unqualified yes, you can. These results do not mean that there's never a trade-off between mission and return. And as practitioners in the field, many of us know that the segment of the market that's trying to serve the poorest, that's trying to reach the hardest to reach, there will always be subsidy required. And sometimes that comes in the form of lower returns. And frankly, that's OK. We should be OK with that as a community. But sometimes there is not a trade-off. And I, I'm not sure why it's such a controversial idea that we could generate market rate returns. The idea of segmentation is one that's being researched right now in partnership with Case at Duke under the leadership of Kathy Clark, there are many segments in other capital markets and asset classes, fixed income as an example, where there's a range of risk and return from govies to corporates to high yield, and nobody complains about that. The research from Wharton tells us that in some segments of the market, it is possible to have both financial and social returns. And we think that's a great thing, because only when we can demonstrate market returns will institutional investors bring large sums of capital to the table. The Wharton Social Impact Initiative conducted this research under the supervision of the chairman of the finance department, Professor David Musto. And Scopus was pleased to be one of the funding partners for the new report. To borrow from the World Economic Forum and the work led by Abigail Noble in her prior role, impact investing is finally moving from the margins to mainstream. An objective, top-tier, globally renowned business school like Wharton, which also happens to be one of my alma maters, it's, they're weighing in affirmatively on impact investing. And if that's not moving into mainstream, I don't know what is. There are representatives at both exits of the room with hard copies of the report, which we urge you to read. Also come to tomorrow's panel, where Dr. Gessi and my colleague Dimple Sani from Scopus will be talking about the findings of the report in detail. So I'm coming to the end of my remarks. And I've saved the best for last. Because our work at Scopus Impact Fund is about generating social and environmental outcomes. Our impact areas are outlined here. And we've invested a lot of time and energy and resources to developing a custom impact measurement framework. Our framework is an impact measurement tool developed in partnership with Bridges Impact, led by Clara Barbie. This tool will allow us to be both specific 
and to be measurable about our impact intentions. In closing, I want to remind us all that we are the ones that we've been waiting for. I look out on this incredible crowd. I'm so glad to be back home. And I'm confident that no matter how large the task ahead may be, that together, like this determined woman on her bicycle, we not only can, we will. And for myself, like these smiling girls so filled with gratitude that remind me of a time when both Tim and I were much younger and not nearly so wise, I too am grateful for your time and attention today. Thank you.